What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Press X Podcast, episode 131, your weekly podcast for gaming news and opinions coming at you each and every Monday. I am Kevin McManus. With me, Todd Broussard. Thanks for having me. And don't adjust your dials. There is no video uh, for this podcast this week, and this is not an accident. That's happened before. Sometimes the video is cut out, and we had to just uh, roll with it. This was a on-purpose choice. We're trying something different. The original idea was to try it mainly to cool down the room, be able yeah. to move the setup. Uh, Todd didn't want to move the setup because yeah. he, he moved too many things already today. And Kevin just keeps getting progressively uh, uglier, so we just decided <laughs> to cut out the video altogether. <laughs> We're like, we can't do yeah, this Yeah, we can't do that anymore. Uh, so Not this to is Zach Yoder. <laughs> uh, so this is your... Regular podcasts on everything. It's just no video this week. Just kind of a, an experiment to test out. There's some things I wanted to test out, and this was one of them. Um, so let us know how you feel. But I imagine not too many people watching the video, the actual video. I, I don't when I watch our podcast. I don't when I watch almost any podcast. Yeah, um, that's it, very they're background true. noise, you know. And yeah. I and I I understand that. Yeah. And so I, it's just something that I wanted to try. On top of that, there's just not a lot of uh, news this week, right. uh, really at all. We kind of scraped the bottom of the barrel um, yeah. when we were finding some things. I might have missed something here or there, but... I there just was... realized we could look at each other and have an actual conversation, but we're still in this <laughs> We're awkward still video. awkward. You, you know what? Let's, let's, let's move. Let's that. do it. <laughs> no, n- there. This is, a, this is a little better. I... That is one part of the problem with the podcast, and something that happened before when... The <laughs> Todd's just, what the fuck are you doing? Oh my gosh. Uh, that was one concern I had when I turned the table around. Because originally it faced, it was turned so that we could face each other. And, right. and, um, I feel like you could just sit on that side of the table. Dude, that, I, you want me to move. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. You saw it. <laughs> You're just too big and goony. Yes. But there, we used to be facing each other. Yeah. And I liked it because it did feel like a conversation. Right. But then I didn't feel like the audience was part of the conversation. Right. Now we don't need to worry about that. Now the audience they is don't always exist. part of the conversation. Oh. Oh, they don't exist. We don't care about the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was going the other route with it. Anyway, um, let's talk about some comments from last week's episode, which was our game of the year so far. Sweet. Uh, you know, we brought up God of War. Mm-hmm. And not much else because That's the game I, of the year. I I thought it was pretty weak. But let's go over just a couple comments that uh that people have posted. Zach Yoder says God of War is my game of the year so far. Like I said, seems like a common. Uh, I'll know pretty soon. Opinion, yeah. You're getting a PlayStation Four tonight, and excited and about you're it. Uh, I assume getting God of War very soon. Yeah, after? I think that'll be the first game I get and play. It's a I'm good choice. About it. It's a good choice. Uh, Bat Nixon agrees, saying, just played God of War, game of the year 2018, instantly moved to my top 10 of all time. Wow. Uh, so so that's a big one. Um, I'm going to click this, and hopefully it doesn't play to read this comment. It might, whatever. We'll roll with it. Live show. Um, so Nick says, two for three on the Bleach character names. So I'll take it. Thank you for adding that. Nice. We got some Bleach characters from Jump Force, I believe yeah. is the name of the game. Yes. And um, Nick was very excited and made me say them on the air, even though I had no clue what the I guess we're going to be playing that game now. Names? I hope not. That looks fine. I don't want to. Fine it'll, be, good, it'll be fun. Is a good word for it. Next up, World End posts. I played Rise of the Tomb Raider. Compared to the 2013 Tomb Raider, it holds up better gameplay-wise, more complex, and feels tighter. Better graphics, of course. The story, I can't say, was much better, uh, but it felt more focused. Decent game overall. Um, I really like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Raider in particular. I'm excited for Shadow. Uh, the When I look for my game of the year, I think decent overall. Well, no, wait, that was just... I, know, I, I just, asked him if he played I'm that just game. Kidding. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll get to his game of the year in a second. Uh, so, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is coming out. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to to dive into that. Rise of the Tomb Raider, one of my favorite games from that year. I think it holds up really well. Yeah. But I agree. I think Tomb Raider, the worst part of Tomb Raider is the story. It like I can't even right. tell you what the story is. I can't tell you. And the other problem is the characters. Laura is the only interesting character. I can't tell you the names of the other characters or anything like. I, I, none of them stuck with me. It's not like Uncharted where you have Sully and Chloe and, you know, all these characters that I know and I can tell you about them. Um, Tomb Raider, I literally can't. I'm like, I, she has a dad. I don't know his name. She's a friend. I don't even know. And if she's, there's a bad guy. I don't even know if she's alive. <laughs> like, 
I just don't remember, but I remember loving the gameplay of those particular games. He goes on to say, Game of the War, Game of the War, uh, <laughs> Game of the Year for me is God of War. No question. I don't see anything else taking it in 2018. I'm debating if God of War or Arkham Knight is my favorite game of all time now. That's how much I like God of War. Uh, and then he goes on to echo Nick's comments that um, Jump Force was under the radar for me, and them adding Bleach is he's sold now. So yeah, um, yeah, God of War seems to be kind of unanimously the the one. It's basically, the only game that's come out this year that I have any interest in playing. Yeah, well, there's ones that I like. Like I liked Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle a whole lot. If that's you go fine. early on, you have um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. You have Monster Hunter World. Like there were games, but I think God of War. I, I don't want to say it set the bar low, but I don't think people were expecting it to be as good as it was, and right. that like blew people away. Right. Um, which well, is fine. you know, what? I it's think my, I haven't played God of War yet, but my game of the year right now is probably Warhammer Vermintide too. Sure. Is that game actually out, or is that an early access game? It's out. It's out? Yeah. Cool. Um, so thank you for the comments. As always, if you leave comments for this particular episode of the show, we will go over them next time that we film and uh, talk about them. So to be part of the show, do that. With that said, let's move into what we've been playing. So what we've been playing, uh, I haven't played that much this week. I had a lot of stuff that I've wanted to play. I talked about Dark Cloud 2 last week and how excited I was to be playing that again. I didn't actually even touch that this week, and that's mostly because Fortnite. Uh, the ending of Fortnite Season 4 is coming up here, and they are they have a thing where the final outfit that you unlock for this season yeah. is actually customizable, and if you hit level 80, you can change the color of it, and I'm level 78. So I've just been oh, kind of nice. grinding Fortnite, trying yeah. to get to level 80. Um, I think I'm going to get there. I'm not super worried. If I do like one good sitting with a group of people that all have the XP boosts, I think I can make it. So I'm not like super worried about it. But that that ate up a bunch of my time. And I played uh, Pokemon Go because they just put out Articuno shiny version. They did like an Articuno day where for yeah. three hours, every gym had an Articuno on it and you can go yeah, battle that sounded them, really sweet. possibly get a shiny. Um, I did about 10 of them, did not get a shiny. But I'm being pulled more and more into these, not games as service, I mean, they're part of games as service, but not games as service, but the time exclusive events. Yeah, Those are really starting neat. to pull me in way and more, way more and more like Fortnite. With all of their, oh, you know, the meteor thing, or not meteor, the rocket's going to go off at this time. And if you're not on, you just miss it. And you don't, you weren't a part of that, you know? Yeah. And their whole battle pass thing where you have to come back and do your dailies and you have to, like, the map changes literally almost, every day. It almost reminds me, the first game that did it for me it was RuneScape with their holiday events. Like, it would go on for, like, a week. Sure. And if you missed it, you missed out on, like, this crazy object that's never going to come back. Yeah. The, the early days of RuneScape. Yeah. 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 And a lot of MMOs do that and like i remember now yeah i remember guild wars did it for halloween Mm because i think that was the first holiday that came up when guild wars 2 came out yeah it was halloween and it was so cool to log on every there's jack-o'-lanterns and all this stuff everywhere and you can get all these cool skins and then you're like now however many years it's been those skins are worth so much money if you if you got them and you kept them um i love that exclusive stuff like it gets me in real life too where they're like hey Physical printing of this game, physical printing of this vinyl, whatever it is. I'm like, yeah. did you say you're only making a thousand? That means I need one. Yeah. Like it, it gets me real good. And they're just doing that in video game form now. It definitely doesn't get me so much, but I feel like you're definitely much more of a like completionist than I am. Mm. Like getting the trophies and the exclusives yeah. and all that good stuff. You don't give a shit. No, I really don't. <laughs> I miss it. Whatever. Yeah, you don't care at all. I was like, hey, yeah. you were even up. And I was like, hey, Todd. Uh, Articunos, you know, you will go do some Articunos yeah. and stuff. And you messaged me legitimately two minutes after the event's over. And you're like, yeah, I'm free to do whatever, whatever you <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I've been playing Pokemon Go and, and Fortnite a whole lot. Yeah. Um, and the only other game that I really played this week was A Hat in Time. And this is a game that I've kind of been championing, um, even though I haven't played it yet. Right. Uh, just from one word of mouth and to the fact that I know I'll love it, but I've been actually waiting for a physical copy of the game. Okay. Um, but I have a friend who bought it and share played the game with me. So I went through, I played a whole bunch of it, a couple hours. And uh, I got to say, this game is jankier than I thought it would be. Mechanic, Not mechanically, that's not the right word, but just like 
textures and pop it. Like, there's problems with the game. Okay. But the actual gameplay is super, super solid and fun. It's made by a small group of people, and it shows. Um, so it is a... It's it's a Mario 64 Banjo Kazooie hybrid style game. So you you have your hub world, which is your um, your spaceship in the sky, right. and basically you look through a telescope, and that's how you go to the world. So those are the paintings that you jump into in Mario okay. 64, and you pick which one you want to do. And at the end of that particular level, you get a hourglass, and there's 40 hourglasses to collect. Once you get a certain number of hourglasses, you can open another door with a different telescope, and so it plays. It, it works like Mario 64. Um, Hat Girl, I believe is her name. She does not control like Mario, which was the first thing that threw me off. They do have some more like speed runny Mario style things. Like you can do a dive and then a roll out of yeah. your dive for like speed runs and stuff. But she has a double jump, which is significantly different than Mario. Mario doesn't double jump. Right. He's got like a very precise, like he has that, um, that cut where you go one way and you turn the direction and jump and he flips and it's yeah. so precise. And the way that they do precision jumping is the double jump. So you jump yeah, and then sure. that second jump is the one that you use to readjust. It's kind uh, of floaty. Um, I wouldn't say it's, f it's more floaty than Mario for sure. I wouldn't say it's floaty though. Oh, gotcha. It feels good. It's just, that's what I was thinking when I think of a double jump is like, so a lot of games do have floaty jumble jumps. Yeah. Um, I don't, it feels good. It's just not Mario, and when right. you're playing the game, it's so much like Mario that you expect Mario, and it just doesn't doesn't control I gotcha. exactly the same. Um, but the gimmick of the game is that you can collect yarn to knit new hats that you put on, and the hats oh, have different neat. abilities. So one is a winged cap hat that lets you run really fast, and you can use it to get up walls and things. Uh, one is like an ice sculpture hat that lets you take shortcuts and basically turn into like a statue for a short period of time. Uh, there's one that's ripped straight out of Majora's Mask that I think reveals secrets. It's like the fox mask in um, oh, yeah. in Zelda. Yeah. yeah. So they have all these nods and things to video games. Um, I will say the game is definitely more mature. There's voice acting in this game, first off. Cool. Um, and it definitely has this like almost British dark uh, comedy style to it. There's a lot of jokes in there about like death and things like that. And it's funny. It is a funny game. Um, but it's a, a part of a sale that's going on right now that we're going to talk Have about. Have you been later. enjoying it? The game? Yes, I've definitely yeah. been enjoying it. I, I definitely really like it. If I personally own the game, which I'm, I still think I'm going to hold out for the physical edition. Um, also, my buddy said I could share play it whenever. Like, yeah. he doesn't have a oh, problem cool. with it. Um, I would 100% 100 the game, barring there being like something ridiculous that you have to do. Yeah. But from what I, I've played of it, the, you know, five, six hours that I've played of it, yeah. it seems like you're just running around collecting these hourglasses. Sick. Now, to go into the worlds a little bit, because that's actually the most interesting thing, the worlds aren't the usual world. It's not like fire world, ice world, water world. Right. Um, the first world is Mafia Town or something along those lines. It's, yeah. It's Mafia World. That's and um, yeah, there's this like comical mafia characters everywhere that run this town. And then the second one is at a movie studio. So like there are these oh, really cool. unique... Uh, areas yeah. that, that, you know, they're not just element based. Uh, but like I said, I've been having a lot of fun with A Hat in Time. Um, it's on sale for like 20 bucks on the PlayStation Store right now. Sweet. I still think Limited Run is partnering with them to do the thing. On their website, it's like, are you putting out physical edition? And they said, more news soon. Like, it's not a no. It's so I'm waiting for it. I want it. Um, but yeah, I, I've been having fun with that game just kind of on the side of, uh, Fortnite. Sick. How about you? What have you been playing? Uh, so I started playing, uh, World of Warcraft again. Great. And I've been playing this game since vanilla. I played through every expansion. I've done every raid. Um, this game like has a special place in my heart. I love this game. That's fine. Um, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I've ta been taking like, I usually take like a break if I like beat, you know, kind of beat the expansion like the story to it yeah 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 mm -hmm. um and i do like the last raid and then i'm like all right well, i'll take a break till the next expansion are you like a party person party meaning like grouping up getting the healer and the tank and yeah the yeah, yeah and running yeah, through dungeons do a big raid of like 25 people see that's where mmos lose me a lot Ooh, that's what i like to do that, yeah i know I, I, i'm like ooh, i'll play through well i don't even really really like playing through the story i'm yeah. just more of an economy guy i'm like i want all the money oh gotcha see i don't yeah, do any it. of that i like to get like all the collectibles like the mounts and the different like weapons and stuff like that. Um, 
and I like to do like ranked PvP and try to be like the first one to do a raid. Well, you just do everything I don't. We should just share an account. We'll get everything. <laughs> It'll be great. I don't, I don't do like I have no crafting skills. I don't do any of those on my character. Yeah, I don't oh sell gosh. anything. I don't get on the auction house. I oh hate that gosh. stuff. Yeah, see, yeah, we're totally different. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I play an MMO and the first thing I do is try to figure out the fastest way to make money. Ooh, yeah, I never make money. That's crazy. I just grind content. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so the new expansion's coming out next month. Um, and there's always like a pre-patch that comes out a month earlier mm-hmm. and they have an event that goes on in the pre-patch and they usually do a bunch of class like updates and changes. And the biggest thing is that like what there's going to be stuff from the last expansion that's going to expire. Like you can't do it anymore. Oh. So I hopped on, um, I think the pre-patch comes out like next week or something, but uh, I hopped on to like get all the stuff that I haven't gotten yet. So yeah, Guild Wars 2 does that. They call it a living story. Yeah. Um, which, in theory, is what I've been talking about that I like. Yeah. Except I don't care about MMO stories. They're so boring to me. They're yeah. so static and not interesting. I'm just like, eh. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I've been, so I've been playing, you know, I played Warcraft 2 when I was like a young child. And then I played Warcraft 3. Mm-hmm. I played World of Warcraft. So I'm like super enveloped in this story. I know yeah. all these characters. Um, I don't know. It's just really interesting. I know the so. Lich King. Yeah, he's awesome. The best character. Sylvanas. Also an awesome character. Proudmore. Proudmore. Jaina Proudmore. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. There's they're a bunch all, of them. They're all from the card game. <laughs> yeah, you lost me. Oh, I only big, know... Uh, it's a big tree, uh, like tree dude. No, you lost me. I only know the characters from the card game. Oh, okay. I do like that world, though. I like yeah, the, the world cool. and the lore. Yeah, there's the a, they have very like well-written characters. And sure. There's like an actual storyline. Sure. There's like cinematic cutscenes and stuff. It's sweet. Mm. Anyways, I've been playing a bunch of that. Um, I got Elder Scrolls online a little. I've been like in an MMO thing right now. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I got Elder Scrolls online. It's on sale on Steam. Picked it up. Uh, got a character at max level. Did some. Did it come with it? Are no. You... No, I just like grinded. What? How much did you play? Uh, I put like 40 hours into it. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. The max level is 50, and then there's this thing called, like, combat points. And they start at level 1, and they go to, like, level 750. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, how and you get your character. Yeah, but it's, like, a different skill tree. So you have, like, the, like, the level 1. You look, It's, like, elder. It's like other Elder Scrolls games. Like, the more you use something, you level that Oh, up. okay. Yeah. Um, but the combat points is just, like, you get them, and you can spin them in this big tree however you want. Mm-hmm. And it just, like... Like your stamina regen's faster, or your health regen's yeah. faster. Or when you do a crit, you heal. Um, so you can kind of customize. You can make any character whatever. Like you can yeah. start out as a mage, but you can be like a tank mage. And there's a bunch of races. So it's very, very much that old. Can Scrolls you reset game. them? Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah, you can reset them for like gold. I think um, it's really easy. Um, I just compare everything to Guild Wars. I'm like, you can do that in Guild Wars. Yeah. Too. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been playing that game. The PvP is really fun. Um, but. I don't know. It's just it's a little stuff like missing something for me. I don't know what, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's just like like the creative team behind the actual Elder Scrolls yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I enjoy Elder Scrolls games, but every time I play one, I put about forty hours in, and I'm like, that was enough for me. Sure, that's yeah. fair. I mean, that's a lot of time, but uh, for an MMO, it's really not. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I well, I feel like I don't know. I feel like other people that play Elder Scrolls games like love them, like Skyrim, Oblivion, and they're like, man, I put like six hundred hours in this game, and mm. it's one of my favorite games. That game's cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've played them all, and I like them all, but I don't like... And I guess I'm not a complete... I, like, finished the story, which is super short in those games. You're supposed to do all these side quests and things. Yeah. My um, whole thing is, I don't think that they're great games. I, I think, think they're, they're cool. I think they have, like, a good world and stuff. Yeah. I think that they are... The moment-to-moment gameplay in them is fun. Yeah. And that's enough to carry people through, and yeah. they get lost, and they don't realize that they just spent eight hours doing nothing. Right. Um... And I think that's their strength. Like, I don't think the actual game is the strength of it. I think it's just... A f- I think... It reminds me of Final Fantasy fifteen, where, like, I spent, like, 10 hours in that game yeah. just collecting three items. Because oh, I was wow. like, I want these three items. Yeah. And I, like, to build them, it took, you know, I really like the system. I just did of, it. And I was like, that was fun. Other games have done this now, but um, Elder Scrolls kind of, like, made the system where, like, you use a skill and it levels up yeah. as you're using it. And I always thought that was really neat. Um, and it was kind of a unique idea to MMO, so I thought it was going to be, which it was. It was a really fun system to work with. Like, if you, you just keep using that ability and it levels up. Um, so that was fun. Uh, but, it's like, as far as MMOs go, not not a big fan of it. Yeah, it seems like a bottom-tier AAA MMO. Yeah, sure. it's weird. 
Yeah, that's weird. There's a lot, I don't know. There's like Kotor or whatever they call it, Slotor, yeah. uh, Guild Wars. This was very much the same thing. It and was like the big dogs are wow and fun. Yeah, things. it was like very much like a game I was looking forward to play because I like those other games. And I was like, eh, that wasn't really an Elder Scrolls game. It was just a mediocre MMO. Yeah. Um, same with the Star Wars game. Uh, what else am I playing? I don't know. I don't think I've been playing. I've been playing like some like Not other Fortnite games, just like a reason. few minutes. Like I'll turn on some injustice and play a few matches, and then I'm just like, I'm ready for like. You know. Yeah, I played more Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. They added yeah. like ten new characters that were already in the single player, which is a little bit frustrating, yeah. but that's okay. Um, I really like Yang. She's the other, the final piece of Ruby that they were missing. Uh, I didn't think that I would like her because she's more of a rushdown. Is it the one that I saw the day? Yeah, the the one she looks cool. She was like grappling. She's more of a rushdown character, and I was like, I don't really think I'm gonna like her, but I like her mechanics. She looks fun. Um, yeah, she she's the other person with the gun looks cool too. Oh, Naoto. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a lot of really cool ones. There's I I don't know their names because I don't. I love Naruto. I'm not. I'm not a fan of their series so much, but um, there's one character who can spend life to t- kind of like turn it into meter, I guess is the best way to, to put it. And uh, he's really... Is he a vampire? Real, is he a vampire? Uh, no, he's just real flamboyant and weird. Ooh. I don't know. That is one cool thing about uh, going back to Elder Scrolls. I guess I, vampires uh, are too. I got kind of burnt out on it, and then someone turned me into a vampire, like another player. I was like near like the ritual site, and mm-hmm. they just like bit me, and I became a vampire. And I got all these like cool abilities. I was like, oh, this is pretty sweet. That was it. Thanks for interrupting was, my that, very interesting story to tell <laughs> yeah, me that. Sorry. That was, that was the highlight of my Elder Scrolls online. Um, but anyway, yeah, I've been playing a little bit more like Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I really like that game. But nice. like I said, this has been a, a low week for me because it's been 90% Fortnite just trying to grind to that yeah. level 80. This week's been a little weird for me. Fortnite. I'm, I'm going to do it. Fortnite really interesting with what they're doing with their story in the past two weeks. I don't know if you know. I'll, no, I'll get you I up to speed really quick. <laughs> so they did a live <laughs> rocket launch. Yeah. It, you had to be in the game and see it. Right. And it hit the ceiling of the map and cracked it open. Oh, that's neat. And it happened live. And then from then on, the map's just been changing every single day without any updates or anything. I do like how they do that. Yeah. It's really cool. That's so cool. I every, like game. every day when you look at the sky, it's cracking more and more and more. And um, portals are opening up everywhere. Oh, that's and neat. every day a new portal or two will open up, and then the next day they'll close and they'll like take buildings and stuff with it. Oh, so wow. like things are disappearing from the map. You think they're gonna completely and redo the map? So there's a lot of speculation about what this. It's obviously season five. They put out the detective skins because people are like trying to figure it out. There's oh, a detective cool. agency in the game now that you can go to. That's awesome. Um, and people are trying to figure out like what's happening with these portals that are opening and closing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I my personal guess is I think they're making the game more than a hundred players. I think they're putting in another map type thing that you can hop through with the portals and that you can kind of go between the two maps and it's going to have uh, more, they're going to have more than a hundred players in the game. That's my, that's my guess. Uh, but a lot of people think it's just going to be, there's going to be a second map. Some people just think they're rearranging the map. Some people think it's just going to be a way to fast travel between different towns. My, my wish is they, uh, you know, you can hop through the portals and then they just take away building and it's a fun shooting game. I, I don't understand. That's the, uh, the building's that's the fine. They've done so yeah, much Minecraft's to fix fun. it. They've done so much to fix the uh, the problems with. It. I only have one complaint with building. I don't really want to get into it. But they they've done a lot to fix fix a lot I'm of just, stuff. I'm just and the cool thing like is, um, they look at you know the statistics of all the gun uses. Yeah. They are like way even now. That's they've awesome. lowered all the shotgun uses. Every single submachine gun is totally viable. I nice. I like the silent submachine gun the best now. Like they really uh, tweaked it at everything and they put in new weapons. Uh, like the dual pistols, the Tommy gun, they put in all these new weapons, yeah. uh, the gold burst gun, oh, that gun and they're sweet. all good. Like They're, they're yeah. all totally usable weapons. Uh, they're figuring out that you need some weapons to deal with building and some weapons to deal with people, yeah. and some that could are okay at both. Yeah. You know, And they're figuring that out. They're like, this weapon's really good at dealing with people who build a lot. And yeah. This, um, it's like the C4 change. They made C4 blow up six blocks. Yeah, and I think that's it is cool. incredible. I do like stuff like that. Yeah. I, I do like that this company is like constantly working on their game. They're constantly listening to their community. And yeah, they, they do. A they're really constantly good job. trying to make it a better game instead of just like this game, like trying to sell you on the game. They're like yeah. actively making their game. Yeah, better. it feels That's like cool. they're up. They're up on top, but they're still climbing the ladder. Yeah, they're still. Really trying, they're not like just standing on the ladder going, "We did it." Yeah, which has happened with a lot of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, living they're, games. they're doing a good job. It's cool. It. And that's why part of the reason I like supporting them is yeah. just because I I think it's really cool that there is a story and characters and stuff 
in a multiplayer game because my complaint about multiplayer typically is that I really like a story in a game. I like, you know, interesting right. things, things to talk about, um, things that stick with you. And like that rocket launch, I'm going to remember that for it. Like that was really cool that I was part of this thing that broke a multiplayer map and then forever on the map's different. And yeah, every day you come that. back and it's different. It's really, really neat. Um, and there's like little changes. Like they have the trucks that um, move each day. Like they kind of, they're progress. they're going somewhere. and It's cool. Um, anyway, anything else that you want to talk about before we move into the shallow news that we have? Yeah, I think I have one more game. I've been playing some it? Lawbreakers, which I haven't played since the oh, beta. Yeah, you haven't talked about this on Yeah, the, I haven't okay. played since the beta, but uh, it became free to play. Um, on I guess Steam. Two weeks ago. Yeah, on Steam. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing some of that. Um, it's the first time I've really gotten to like kind of try out all the characters and like get real deep into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's a cool uh, game. It is. It is a very cool game. Very There's unfortunate. A lot of different. Yeah, it's like me playing it. As I've probably put about ten hours into it so far. Sure. Um, which is a decent amount, you know, to get a feel for the game. Um, but I don't know how this game like didn't do better. It's it's really fun. They they did what I call the Battleborn problem, where they they did the opposite of Fortnite, where they tried to pick on. They did like what PUBG did, where yeah. they're like trying to pick on the the big thing, and um, that usually backfires right. on you. Uh, all it does is, usually is give attention to the other the other team and all this stuff. But the issue with it is that when the other team is Blizzard, it never goes well. Blizzard just buries companies, you know? It, it's similar to, I feel like, Rockstar um, with, like, Red Dead 2. It's the reason nobody wants to be anywhere near that game. Like, there's certain companies that can just devour you and going after them, like, specifically by name, too. Right. Um, not a good marketing plan. Yeah, it sucks. Um, but, yeah, I think that game probably could have maybe added two new characters, waited a little while, and launched and, like, had an actual launch, like in stores everywhere yeah. launch and maybe done better um it is or unfortunate because it came it, out free to play like to begin with i think now that would work i yeah. think so this is another thing i think fortnite changed the free to play market like free to play even to me was always this kind of like budgety term i'm like ooh free to play i don't want to play a free to play game um usually it's written with microtransactions and all the stuff and i feel like fortnite was such a success that people are way more open to free-to-play games right now. Like, it's not a dirty term anymore. When you hear free-to-play, that's sure. more natural. Whereas just two years ago, when people said free-to-play, they were like, ooh, that's not good. I get to um, that a little bit. Yeah, so, like, even games like H1Z1, they're like, hey, we're a free-to-play game. And they're like, oh, we got 10 million players. Like, people are just way more willing to try that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, if they launched the now as a free-to-play game with, a, like, a Battle Pass-type system, yeah. I think I don't think it would do amazing, but I think it would do well. Yeah, um, it's crazy because I don't give a flying fuck about this battle pass thing. I think it's like super uninteresting. I don't want to log on and have to like have to do something to like get my battle pass le- leveled up. I'm I mean, you can just game. buy it. Yeah, I don't want to do that either. I mean, you don't have to do any. You can just play the game. Yeah, I can do that too, but I get yeah. bored of it. I don't know. It's just not my kind of thing. I obviously it's doing something right because they got to you know. It's addicting. Players, <laughs> I don't get it. It's just a carrot on a stick that keeps yeah. moving constantly as you, as you get closer and closer. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I wish that that game start maybe started development later or something. Like, yeah. I wish it would launch about now. Yeah, that would be good. But uh, it's oh well. I don't know. There's like 300 people playing it on Steam. Like usually when I get on, um, so you know I don't have to wait to get in a match. But uh, it's not like my friends are all playing this game, you know. So yeah, if it went free to play on PS4, I'd totally yeah. Totally. And then I've been play. playing uh, some Quake Champions, which I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast either. Um, but I, it was also free to play for a little while. Um, right after uh, the Bethesda conference, they made it free to play on Steam. Mm-hmm. Um, and that game's sweet too. I really uh, have played some other. Um, I mean, like from playing other Quake games. This one's like got that sweet feel. I meant to get um, that game, but they added some like a few like little minor That's changes stuff. just to kind of like spice up the game. Like every character has like a passive ability. Um, you know, some are slower, have more health. Or yeah, it's a it it's a it's cool. hero shooter, but type very, it's like situation. very minor hero shooter. So yeah, well the thing is, I mean, hero shooter was kind of I don't want to say it was coined by Blizzard, but Overwatch definitely and, and Team Fortress Team too, Fortress actually, too. Yeah. Um, you know, made them kind of what they are today, but right. like 
Unreal, which is my favorite shooter, mm-hmm. the Unreal tournament games. I mean, if you want to say it's a hero shooter, you can because yeah, there's very four different so. there's yeah. four different races, and yeah. the juggernauts have more health, but they yeah. move slower. The you know the, there's another one that has less health, but it's faster. The robots can double jump. I think is their yeah. ability. Like that's technically uh, like a hero shooter. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm interested in Quake Champions. I meant to it's get fun. Man. They it's made really it free. Fun. I don't remember. It's still free. I don't think it is. I'm not sure, but I, they made it free for like. A few weeks, I yeah. think, and I, I may have missed it. Oh, well. I'm not sure. Yeah, but okay. uh, I think that's all I've been playing. Right. I hope to be playing a lot more. I'm really excited about this PlayStation. Let's move into the news. All right, so let's start off with the PlayStation mid-year sale has started. It has hundreds of games on sale. I believe there's about 700 games on sale. Um, I normally don't bring up sales stuff, but like I said, it's a week. week. So... I was yeah. like, oh, this is new. Like, it's one of the hottest news stories this week, actually. So, um, yeah, lots of good sales on there. Some recommendations that I would pull. Um, Until Dawn's $5. I think that's awesome. Not a sponsor. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, though I would be sponsored by Until Dawn. I love that game. Uh, the Order 1886, I think, is $3 or $4. Um, I th- That game, I think that game is fine. I think it is like a mid-level, you know, game. Um, but for that price, it is absolutely worth it completely. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of smaller games. Journey is like seven dollars. I definitely recommend that. Um, what a un- great time to get a PlayStation. Unfinished Swan, I think, is two bucks. Uh, Edith Finch is on sale. The Shantae's are on sale, which I'm a big fan of. Hat and Times on sale. Um, I personally picked up Siren, which is a PlayStation Two game that's now on PlayStation Four nice. um, that I've been wanting to play for a very long time because it's done by the same lead as Silent Hill. Would you say that it was on your uh, video game bucket list? Oh, maybe. Maybe we should do a topic about that. Um, it's a game that I've been wanting to play for a long time because uh, the lead of Silent Hill went and did this game, and then he went and did Gravity Rush. And oh, I nice. love Gravity yeah. Rush, and I love Silent yeah. Hill, and I'm like, I'll probably love this game. And I actually own it on PlayStation 2. I've just nice. haven't played it. Right. Um, and I was like, well, for $3 on PlayStation 4, I'll just get the up-res one. It has trophies. We'll do that. Nice. Um, there's some other... play. I think almost all of the PS2 games are on sale. Like cool. Twisted Metal Black is like $1.50. The Dark Clouds are all $4, which is totally worth it. Definitely hey, go check Gears those War out. Two? Or not Gears. I'm sorry. God of War 2? No, the, the God of Wars aren't on the backwards compatibility thing or whatever what? you want to uh, call bummer. it. There's not that many games on there um, the, on the backwards compatibility thing. But anyway, it's a really good sale. Check it out. It's got There's a lot of VR sales going on, too. Um, that yeah, are pretty I'll definitely tempting. be uh, checking that out. And I also picked up uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, I Ooh. think it's called. Yep. Um, I haven't actually played it yet, but I picked that one up. That one's not on sale. I just wanted it. Yeah, um, I mean, it's only so 20 bucks to begin with. Ten. ten bucks, ten bucks. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that game looks really sweet. So I, I picked that up. I, I wanted to play it before this, but then they're like, "Oh, Articuno Day." And yeah. I was like, "Well, I guess I gotta go do that." Yeah. Timed events. Gotta not get a shiny Articuno. Um, so yeah, I, I'd re- I'd definitely recommend as soon as you hook up your PlayStation, check those out because they last for about another week. Those oh, yeah. sales. Um, so that's nice. Next up, sticking with some PlayStation news, the budget-priced movie tie-in Ratchet and Clank game. Uh, which came out, I think, in 2016, I believe. It might have been 2015. I think it's 2016. Um, it got an 85 on Metacritic, and we have just found out that it is actually Insomniac's most successful game. Oh, so wow. The they game did looked awesome. The other Ratchet and Clank games, they did the Resistance franchise. Uh, they're working on Spider-Man now, which will probably be the most successful, I imagine. I imagine, If yeah. I had to guess. But yeah, they said that their most successful game was that most recent... $40 Ratchet & Clank game that kind of just appeared. Yeah. Um, with a really bad movie. Not really bad. With a, It was a, fine. Mm, movie. I mean, it's not good, but no. if you like Ratchet & Clank, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. Um, movie tie-in. And I just thought that that was interesting. Um, you, you really enjoyed this game, yeah? Ratchet & Clank, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think it is one of the better PlayStation 4 games. Uh, it is a really good, like... I really want to play it. ...remake of the... Um, you know, kind of the original. It's more of a reimagining. They, yeah. they changed kind of the story around and stuff. Uh, but the gameplay and it's super pretty. It looks, you it know, like look a Disney really nice, movie yeah. or, or something along those lines. Um, it reminds me of like a Pixar movie. Yeah, it, it's really, really, really pretty. Um, gameplay is really good. It's funny, which is a rare thing in yeah. video games that this game is actually funny. Um, and it also just went on to the greatest hits, I think they call it. Uh, they have PlayStation Select games. Another good reason that you're getting the PlayStation. Uh, they just dropped the price of like 
20 PlayStation games to 20 bucks. So Ratchet and Clank's Sick. on there, Bloodborne, Uncharted, The Uncharted's, um, Horizon, like a whole bunch of the big name games. Nice. Street Fighter Five. Um, there's third party ones in there. They they all just drop to in price. So, but yeah, Ratchet and Clank is uh, awesome. You That's can, awesome. You can borrow it if you want and check it out. Sweet. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Next up, Microsoft let the release date of Shenmue One and Two HD slip before Sega got around to announcing it officially. Uh, they are apparently coming August 20th, I believe, was the release date for uh, Shenmue 1 and, 1 and 2. Do you have any interest in these games? Mm, no. Do, you, do you, you don't have any interest in them and their history as uh, video games? Or, or what is it about them? Uh, I don't know. I just like, I don't know what it, about it I don't care about, mm-hmm. but I don't care about it. That's fair. <laughs> I don't, it's I don't it's interesting. Um, from what I, I haven't played them. Yeah, I am getting this collection one and two. I haven't played them either. Um, they're just quick time events. Yeah, but like they kind of invented the quick time event, so they're right. interesting. But people who play them now are like, yeah, but there's other games that just do it better now. So right. why would you play these? And my response to that is because I want to. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> um, like this weird like nostalgia. Just check thing. it out. So, uh, sure. I, I mean, there's. I have met people who like Shenmue Two is their favorite game of all time. I've definitely met people like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's based off the back of the characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, In yeah. the story, but he, it's kind of like, like this is just a less popular of those nostalgia ones. It's kind of like Yakuza without all of the um, without all of the like combat and the weirdness and the, all that stuff. It's it just kind of like a walkthrough. Uh, Japanese culture, I guess. Right. And with three coming out in 2019, I believe now, we'll see, probably 2020. Um, w- we'll see how these hold up. I'm interested. I'm interested to see the lengths they go to remaster them. Like, are they changing some control things? Are they changing, you know, the graphic? Like, they'll up the graphics, obviously. Right. But are they, are they actually, like, messing with some systems? Um, or are they just kind of porting it and making it look pretty? Like, they... they um, Devil May Cry collection was literally just the games like yeah. ported. Yeah, you said you're a little uh, and I was like, why that. do these look so bad? Like yeah. they were fun. I enjoyed playing them, but like they just looked like the games. Yeah. They, they didn't really do too much to them. That's so always I, I hope a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, but there, I think it's a thirty dollar collection, so not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, next up. PlayStation Now. Let's talk about this. I told you we were scraping the bottom of the yeah. barrel with these news stories. Uh, PlayStation Now is getting a summer sale and trial. So they're now doing an offer where if you haven't been a member to PlayStation Now, you can subscribe for uh, the first month for $10. So that's their offer. So kind of competing with the Game Pass. It yeah. seems like they're finally paying attention to that. Nice. You can get a 12-month subscription for $100. Um, and there's an exclusive PlayStation Plus three months for $30 and they're all going to be available until September 25th. Uh, and you can also do a seven day trial to kind of test it out, see how your connection works, all that stuff. Nice. Uh, and the interesting part about this to me, at least is at the bottom of it, they say, stay tuned for more updates on PlayStation. Now. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a rumor going around that you are going to be able to download the PlayStation now games and play them not streamed. And, that would directly compete with Game Pass, yeah. Uh, Xbox that would Game be Pass, pretty big. And now that they're pushing, I mean, they to be fair, they push a sale on PlayStation Now every summer. I'm pretty sure, right? But um, now that they're doing that, um, it's and they're saying there's new updates to come and stuff. I think that this has some validity, and I think that the specifically the PlayStation Four games will probably be downloadable in the next couple months for PlayStation Now. So um, I know we we've had some some listeners talk about PlayStation Now. I've used it. I personally didn't have a problem with it. I played fighting games on it. I thought it was fine. I'll definitely try it. I played Resident Evil Five, the co-op one, yeah. on it, and had a good time. I played like puzzle games and things like that. Um, I think it works. Totally fine. Um, you, and there's a seven-day trial to test your internet and make sure that it works for you. But if you are able to download those games, that's going to be a huge Yeah, I think update. that's really neat. Um, and I kind of predicted that they were going to relaunch this service as something else, like under a different umbrella. Oh, but yeah. it doesn't seem like they're going to do that uh, based on this. But cool. We'll see how that goes. It'd definitely be interesting if they just like go right out of the gate, like trying to compete with Microsoft. Yeah, because the Game Pass is cool. 
Yeah. Game I Pass feel like is it's like cool. the thing Microsoft has going for it right now. It is definitely the biggest thing besides crossplay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Have you seen any Sony post literally anything ever online? Uh, it's a negative Ghost Rider. It, it's awful. So I'm just going to go right now, go into Twitter. I'm going to do, um, we'll just do PlayStation's Twitter. And I'm going to click the first thing that's up. Uh, test out the revamped combat system in Assassin's Creed Origins three hours ago. All right. And I'm going to scroll down. Please let us change our gamer tags. Um, the next one. <laughs> Can we test out playing our Fortnite accounts on the Switch? <laughs> the next one. Please give us cross progression and cross play. Hashtag not for the players. Um, next one. I want to test cross pro- progression system on Fortnite, if you don't mind. Blame Sony, not for the players. It, it, people furious about yeah. this cross progression thing. And I know there's. As they should be. I agree, but there is a group of people that defend them, and I don't actually get it. And I am, you know, I, I love Sony. Yeah. I, I do think that they have the best console. I think it's not even close. They have the best exclusives, all this stuff. Cross play, I understand them not wanting. I've talked about this before. I understand them not wanting cross play. You have a bigger player base than the other two combined. So screw them. I get that. Right. But the problem is the cross progression. And I, I think the only way that I've set, I can set it to people that argue for some reason that Sony should be able to hold hostage your Epic account and you're not able to use it on other things is Netflix. Like, what if you logged into Netflix on your PlayStation and now you can't log in on Netflix on anything else? Yeah, that's, that sounds awful. that's what they did. Like, just to give context to people, that is what they did, except in video game form. If you logged into Fortnite Epic account on your PlayStation, it is totally black market. But it's even, it's even worse. It's not like you can just cancel a subscription and make a new, like, Netflix account. Like, Netflix is Sure, you be lose the same. all your stuff, yeah, too. Yeah, that's so crappy. Like, oh, I put 100 hours in this game and I have all these skins? Yeah. Now I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it isn't actually exactly like ne- Netflix, but yeah. They, it's even worse. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, so just for context really for crappy. people that might be defending that, I, I don't know how you argue that that is okay, um, that they do that. But like I said, the crossplay, I don't care. That'd be nice, but I don't care. The, it's the cross progression that drives me crazy. Yeah. But I'm, I just want to say I'm proud of these people. To, you got to do it. Todd Howard of Bethesda tweeting it out. People tweeting it out. Uh, Greg Miller, big uh, name in the PlayStation ecosystem, tweeting right. out that he, you know, he switched to Xbox now to play his games. Um, for like Fortnite games, so not good. Uh, not a good look. Let's move into our last news story: Kill the Kill, the hit anime. I love this anime. Getting a fighting game. Yep. By Arc System, who did Dragon Ball Fighters and Blaze Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got a gameplay trailer of it. Oh, I haven't actually seen this. Okay, I I was I was curious if you have. So I'm gonna. I'm going to play it for you. I am I was really excited when I heard this game was coming So out. I was too. I'm not as excited anymore. I didn't think you were a Kill a Kill fan. I'm not, but I'm a fighting game fan. I mean, yeah, Kill a okay. Kill's fine. Um, so. Well, let's give it a look. Yeah, so that's the game. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's, it's like a Pokemon. It's like Xenoverse. Yeah. Um, Except it, with more tits. Yeah, it, it seems to me like Pokin, where why, why would they do that? You have an open arena and you can hit somebody into the the yeah. combat, and then you can knock them out of it in, in back into three D space. I don't I don't like those style games. I was instantly I think they're like, fine, Ooh. but it's not the kind of game that I want to put a bunch of time into, and it sucks because I love Kill a Kill. Yeah, man, I'm gonna try to like it. But sure. I'm not. I'm it looks little, beautiful. I'm, oh, it does look really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. They went straight from like this anime footage to like right into the game. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this just looks exactly the same. That's cool. No, nah, yeah, it looks really good. Like similar to Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball looks incredible. Yeah. But like, man, as soon as I saw the overhead camera, I was like, uh oh. Yeah. And then you see like the skewed third person perspective thing. I'm like, oh, this is not. This I want to see like the I comments want. on that and see people are kind of not happy about it. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I haven't. I, the problem is I'm not a big Kill a Kill fan, so I have trouble gauging that anyway. People are like, oh, I like the art style. I don't like the art style. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I watched two episodes of the show, so. 
Um, but yeah, I was a little disappointed that it's not just a typical fighting game because like I'll play a fighting game with whatever characters if yeah. the systems are good and work and it's yeah. Pretty. If it was just the same like Blaze Blue, like Xenoverse or not Xenoverse, um, Dragon Ball Fighters. Dragon Ball Fighters, yeah, um, system and it doesn't look like it's a uh, cross tag game either, which is nice. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, it doesn't so, look like you're tagging in. Yeah, which is a lot different from a lot of the other games they've been coming out with. So, uh, yeah, I would have much rather just, like, you know, pick a fighter, classic, like, kind of 2.5D. Yeah. Oh, well. A little bummed out. Yeah. Um, with that said, let's move into question time, which is going to be video game bucket list. So, basically... Um, something that you've always wanted to do that you want to do related to video games. I don't, you can stretch that as much as you want. Uh, if you want to be in a video game movie, that is a okay. So we're going to go through our personal kind of bucket list choices and, uh, and talk about them. All right. Uh, let's just go back and forth. Just throw thing, sure, things out there. Out first. Um, I want to play the Super Nintendo classic. Um, I want that little mini box. Yeah. Uh, I think every game on there is quote unquote a classic. Right. And I want to beat them all. I, this is something that I've been wanting to do kind of since they announced the thing. Um, I've already gone through a couple of them since it's come out, but there's big ones. I've talked about really wanting to do Super Metroid this year. Yeah. I will get to that. But uh, the Donkey Kong uh, Country games or another ones like that Super Nintendo library is a library that I completely jumped over. Yeah. I had an NES and I had an N64. So I never really had a Super Nintendo. And I, to this day, own very few Super Nintendo games. Like I, I have Mega Man games. Yeah. I have Mario games. But like I'm missing um, some big, big ones. So uh, playing through that is kind of the perfect way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I think it's a good way to do it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it, it feels genuine, um, as basically as genuine as it can feel, I think, without the actual hardware. So I really want to go through at least those games and maybe some other hits um, from the Super Nintendo. So kind of educate myself on the Super Nintendo would be nice. my first one. Because, uh, yeah, that's a system that I care about that I just lost. I, I didn't have growing up. So I think that's a good one. I would like to play at least one game on every system that's ever come out. Wow. That that old uh, Commodore 64, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of them, like a bunch of random ones. Yeah, you're going to Virtual Boy it up. And yeah. There's a lot there's of bad lot. ones. You yeah, want to play N-Gage? I play them all. Mm. All the systems. Mm. N-Gage is really bad. Yeah. I th- oh, there's a, lot, I don't, there's a lot of bad ones. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that'd be cool. That would be cool. That'd definitely be. I mean, I would like to do that, too. That's not something I'm like... <gasps> I, I really want to do this, but that's something I'd totally, totally check out. Here, here's one to piggyback on that. Okay. I want a complete N-Gage collection. It's a very strange one. That um, is a strange one. I How many games is that? 55, I think. A very small library. Um, I had an N-Gage for a couple months. Um, I liked it, but I think it was a little bit of uh, Stockholm Syndrome. It was not, not good. Yeah. I just... I just told him i was like this is expensive and i should like it um but i have like 10 15 games i am always looking on ebay to like pick them up for cheap because i don't want to spend a lot of money on them there's a couple that like i if they were the last ones i needed like there's an elder scrolls game on it and there's, yeah. there's a couple weird ones on there right um but i've always wanted to complete the engage collection because i want a complete collection of something and i think that that one is a personal collection that would make sense and it's a small library so it works and um, I've always wanted to complete a collection of that, and then I wanted to stream myself playing all the games. Not beating them all, but just playing them all. Nice. Um, that, that's something that I've always thought of. There's some good ones on there. Like, I, I have Monkey Ball for it, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, there's a Tomb Raider, there's a Sonic Racing. Like, there, there's some good ones, good games in theory, on there, just bad versions of those good games. So, yeah. I think it would be fun to kind of go through them. But, yeah, um, I like the Engage just nostalgically. For no no good reasons, I like the engage, and I I've always wanted to complete a collection. And I think that would be the collection I go for. I want it. I would want it to be Vita because yeah. I love the Vita. There's so many Vita games. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's disgusting how many Vita it's, games it's there are. Insane. So that that one's just way that out. That would of my be league. a very impressive collection. Yeah, <laughs> the, but that one's way out of my league. So, uh, complete engage collection um, would be another one for me. I would like 
to play all of the Final Fantasy games, even the ones that aren't, haven't That's been on released mine too. in um, the United States. Uh, me and my brother were talking about this mm-hmm. um, a little while back, and uh, we had a buddy. His dad used to live in Japan, and he would get Final Fantasy Seven on sale in the mid. Oh, cool! Whatever sale, yeah. Thanks for interrupting, but that's sweet. Hey, man, I'm, um, I'm here to help. That's all good. Uh, but yeah, so he got the opportunity to play a lot of these uh, like Japanese games. Um, and just thinking about that, I was like, man, I would really like to play all the Final Fantasy games. You know, I've only played basically all the new ones, and I've played one on the Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I played. Um, to do that. So I played like. I played seven, but I haven't beaten it. Yeah, and I've played. I beat ten. I beat. I guess that's part of it. I'd like to beat them all too. Yeah, I beat ten. I've only I, beaten two of them. I played twelve this year. I w- wasn't a big fan of it. I, I like. I loved half that game and then hated the other half. Unfortunately, yeah. um, and I just couldn't get over it. I really like thirteen and thirteen two. Thirteen three is trash, but I beat it. Um, Fifteen, like I, I went through that even though I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Like that series is just, it's interesting because they're all so different, and yeah, it are. is such a super special series. That it's one of the few series that's still going that kind of spans all these consoles and all these generations. Right. And I have also wanted to do that. I've also played a bunch of six, and I really liked that. Um, but I was like, I need to save this for like a. I have a month, and I'm, yeah. you know, I can do yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. That's on the Pull Super out. Nintendo Classic, too. But that that was actually one of mine. That was good. Um, another one of mine, an interesting one. Um, I want to meet Kinji Inafune, who uh, co-designed Mega Man. Oh, um, that's cool. There's, I mean, I'll throw Kojima in there, too, because yeah. I think it would be awesome uh, to meet him as well. But I think if I could only meet one, I'd want to, you know, meet the creator of Mega Man, for sure. Um, a fun little aside story, might he... Uh, kickstarted Mighty Number no. Nine. Obviously, that didn't go very well. Right. But uh, I like that game. I don't love it, but I like that game. It's cool. And I, I, you know, I like to collect some stuff from it. I have like the T-shirt and stuff from the Kickstarter. Right. Um, I went on eBay and I was like, I'm just gonna buy some of the Kickstarter stuff that people are selling because people don't want it because people didn't like the game. Right. And it's been awesome. Like I got, uh, I got a different box, like a NES style box. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the art book or the strategy guide and art book for it and it's uh, that's it's, really neat. it's autographed by him that's cool um so i actually have his autograph uh just because people were like the game bombed and they're just like all throwing their stuff on ebay and i was like this is the best that's and i really just cool. went through and got a whole bunch of it for like dirt cheap. i think i paid ten dollars for the autographed art book that's awesome like, it was really really cool so um yeah meeting him would be probably probably the developer i'd want to meet the most there's other developers that i like know that i would like to meet but i don't really know what i would like cliff blazinski and it's like i yeah i love unreal but like i i don't really know what i would say to you thanks for the games uh, yeah like yeah i like i actually have questions for inafuna that i would yeah. like to have answered um that's cool so um i just had one and i just kind of blank oh i would like to go like uh actually travel and attend an E3. Mm, yep. um, I've never done it. They look like a ton of fun. Um, it's really cool to get to try out all those games yeah. live at E3. I, um, I Sometimes I just daydream about it. Like after, Usually after E3, yeah. I'm like, man, if I was at E3, what lines would I have ran to? Because it wouldn't be the big games. Yeah. I'm not waiting hours to play Smash Brothers. It's going right. to come out later. Right. But like, I would go play a lot of the smaller, more interesting, yeah. like Tunic and stuff like that. I mean, that. I definitely... That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. It definitely would be cool to uh, like get some footage of it too, and you know. Oh just yeah, wait for the, just uh, be able to do like channel stuff. Yeah, so I talked about channel. going with Craig um, because the, there's tickets. It's open to the public now, right? And I talked about going with Craig over the past year and a half ish. Uh-huh. Like we brought it up and stuff, right? Um, maybe, maybe in the next year or two we can. I, I think it would be a really cool like vacation slash trip. To like yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Just go there and that be part of the vacation. Mm-hmm. Just be like, oh, and we have tickets to go to E3 these yeah. three days. I think that'd be really cool. Is. Um, yeah, I, I definitely want to go to. Hopefully, E3. it's not five days again. <laughs> I definitely want to go to E3 and uh, Comic Con, some uh, along those lines for Shersies. Um, my next one is pretty simple. I want to make a game. I've uh, done games before when I was younger, and I'm talking like really young like fifth grade sixth seventh and eighth i think were kind of the times i made like six or seven i mean i made probably 20 different style games Uh but i like finished 
five, I would say. Yeah. Um, and one in particular that I was super proud of. Now, they were all derivative of other games minus one. Okay. Um, they were all like just a Legend of Zelda and I designed levels and stuff. And I mean, I'm sure it wasn't good. Um, but it was completely playable. The Legend of Zelda game was a couple hours long. Like, it was a decently sized game. And I remember, fun story, my brother got mad at the computer that he was on, and he took it out back and shot it. And Jeez. my game was on that computer, and I just lost it. Um, Holy cow. Yeah. He, he got real mad at the computer one day. He threw it out a window and then shot it. That's impressive. <laughs> yes. Um, so I lost that game, and I haven't been able to find any of my other ones that I've ever worked on. My mom gave away my computer in high school when I when I moved. She was just like... At like nice. I, yeah, I was like talking to her on the phone. Family like, of the oh, year. I gave it away. I'm like, what the... Family of the year Why would you right give here, that away? Yeah, I know. Um, but anyway, I, I really wish... Like, if I could go back in time, mm-hmm. that's one of the things I'd do. I'd be like, back these games up places because in 10 years, you would love to play this game that you made. But yeah. anyway, I made like two Mega Man style ones and a uh, Legend of Zelda one. And then I wanted to make my own... Oh, and I did an impossible quiz. I don't know if you've ever played the impossible quiz, mm-hmm. but I did my own impossible quiz that was just a bunch of answers that were like correct, but you had to think outside the box to kind of get the That's right cool. answer. And then um, the, then I did one game that I only got like probably 15 minutes of gameplay through that was a puzzle game. And that was like my own design of a puzzle game nice. that had to do with colors and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I would love to have those games back It'd be really so, cool. so, so much. Uh, so yeah, I, I would like to make my own game from the ground up. I don't know what it would be, either a puzzle game or a horror game. Um, I talk a lot about survival horror. I yeah. I feel like I understand survival horror really well, and I think that I could give great ideas for survival horror. I just don't know if I'd be able to execute them. Right. Um, but I would love to do something like that at some point. That'd be really cool. Or just in the background while I'm yeah you know, doing doing my other stuff. Uh, I would like to compete in. Like Evo or Combo Breaker. Oh, wow. Or that's a, that's one a, of these. I don't know how what the registration for that stuff is. Can anybody just join and then it's just always I don't the think same? It's Evo, but. It's just always the same eight people that make it to well, the Well, some of them you have to get like like a certain amount of. Certain number of wins. Like, yeah, a certain amount of points and like they're, if they have like a multi. Qualifiers. Like, yeah, 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 qualifiers and things like that. Uh, but things like Combo Breaker, you can just show up and register. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, 140 people and it goes down to top 64. I think we were talking about going to a fighting game tournament um, like 40 minutes away. I think it was last year. I just I just found the um, poster for it in a Dunkin' yeah. Donuts, actually. Uh, <laughs> surprise. Got to get that product placement in. In a Dunkin' Donuts, actually, and I was like, hmm. I kind of want to go to this, and, yeah. and they—I know they had Killer Instinct, and I think that's what the one that Ooh. I was telling you. But they had like Killer Instinct and Smash Brothers, yeah. Um, and I think they had Tekken, possibly. And I was like, oh, we could go there and play these and get destroyed. That'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, I don't know. I've learned from Magic: The Gathering that it's not super fun to be like, here's a bunch of money to do something, and then yeah. here's money to play in something, and then you lose, <laughs> and then you yeah. don't get anything out of it. It's like, oh, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah, from playing a lot of like ranked online, like especially in Justice, and like getting a lot of wins and like feeling pretty good and then you watch like pro players and you're like oh i can actually do that stuff you're like mm-hmm. like that's when it like becomes fun to like go to those events um so that'd be really fun um another one for me is specific a specific game and i talked about it last week and then it's dark cloud 2 um i want to be dark cloud 2 i've always wanted to beat this game dark cloud's one of my favorite playstation 2 games Dark Cloud 2 was always this weird game to me where I rented it and it kicked my ass and I couldn't I couldn't beat it. And I rented it again and I couldn't get past the same part. I kept getting stuck at this like exact spot. And years went by and it actually became a decently expensive PlayStation 2 game. I think it's about 40 or $50. Um, it might even be more than that. And I bought it with a strategy guide a couple of years ago. And I was like, I am going to beat this game. And I got to the same part... <laughs> And I was like, I, I don't know That's what hilarious. it is about this chapter two part where you need to, there's like, you hit this part in chapter two where there's a bunch of grinding you need to do. Is and you the need, game of the train yes. in the forest? And you need okay. a bunch of money to yeah. do a bunch of stuff. And you need to learn all the mechanics and actually use them. Like there, I feel like I've been me- witnessing you playing this Dude, game for it, like since I've known you. Yeah, you just it, haven't it, I have been. <laughs> um, been in the same. There's a system with the where you can turn yeah. into monsters, and yeah. you need to use that to talk to certain monsters to get specific items to progress the story. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game. There's a lot, 
and I've never made it past chapter two. And like on top of that, the game is very hard if you don't grind. Like you'll get one shot by everything. It's it's got uh, what I like to call a Dark Souls combat system, but it's got the system where you lock onto an enemy yeah. and you need to learn their movements and you need to know how long your attack animations are to get back from their attack animations. But then on top of that, it has like a weapon breaking system. So if they're guarding and you swing at them, your weapon's going to break faster and stuff like that. Uh. Um. Anyway, I'm on chapter three. Nice. I have progressed to actual chapter three in the game, and I'm super excited about it. I think there's six or eight chapters, so I have a long way Jeez. to go, but I am very happy that I'm further in the game than I've ever been. It's just this weird game from my childhood that I rented and I rented, and then I bought it like when I was older, and, and I bought it again on PlayStation 4, and like I really want to beat that game, um, so I'm, I'm chipping away at that still. So nice. I, hopefully, in you know a couple weeks, I'll have that game done. That's awesome. Um, that'd be really cool. Do you have anything else? Uh, a big one for me that I've been wanting to do for a while now, I just like kind of keep putting it off, is I want to start um, streaming on Twitch, but like very regularly, like four, to- four or uh, five times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really put some money and some effort into yeah. the stream, make it look nice. Streaming's hard. I mean, I've been streaming every once in a while on um, the Twitch channel that we have for Press X. Yeah. And I think it's super fun. It's very it's fun. It's just yeah. like also super exhausting. It is. It's. I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, it's. It's a lot of work, and you have to be in a, a good mood, and you, yeah. you like. You have to be positive all the time. Like you, you're getting like destroyed in a game. You can't just like right. curse out the people and say, like. Right. You have to be like, oh, okay, keep. I got to get better at this, and I actually think it makes you better at games because you stay more level headed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but you know, I just I love video games. I love. Uh, you know, I watch Twitch all the time. Um, I have, you know, real respect for these people that do it full time and really, um, you know, are interactive with their communities of people that they have watching them. Yeah. Um, you know, I enjoy interacting with, um, people and talking about the games I'm playing. Um, so I don't know. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I've, I've done it a few times, um, like through my Xbox. Um, and I, I set it up on my computer. I've just never like, you know, I just like haven't gotten down and like really fooled with it. So. But yeah. uh, I would definitely like to start doing that. I've been wanting to do it for a long while now. Man, setting it up was a nightmare. But the first time I went live and I played for a couple hours, I was like, this is fun. Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm not consistent about it or anything right. yet. Uh, I'm still kind of testing the waters, but mm-hmm. I definitely enjoy it. Yeah. I, and I still want to do like fighting games with you where we just do like yeah. verses over and I'm, over. I mean, I'm always down to do that. Um, I think that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, that's off the top of my head, at least. Those are the ones that I thought of. One that I do want to say is one of mine was to do a video game podcast that was always one i've been wanting to do a podcast for probably maybe not seven years but maybe like six or five years before um i started this one and i feel like there was a very good window for me to do it and i didn't do it and then i was just like hey kellen you want you want (laughs) you want to do do a thing on the internet Uh, and i did the podcast i'm super happy that i did it i'm super thankful uh for everybody what made you want to do it that um, uh that joined in and helped out because that was definitely a big one for me for a really long time that's awesome podcast what made you uh want to do like that first episode um, so basically I started listening to podcasts, yeah. um, particularly while working. I, I would, they're just easy to oh, listen it's to. It's, uh, it's like better than music when you're like washing dishes. Yeah. Like them and audiobooks, they're just really they're good, awesome, like background right. noise. And I, I've always said I, video games are my favorite medium, but I actually think podcasts are probably my second favorite followed by movies. I really like audio podcasts and like they can range so much. So there's yeah. like news and talking and friend, you know, the, this um, this chemistry that you yeah. can get from doing it. But there's also like stories mm-hmm. and like there's, you know, people telling scary stories that are really good podcasts yeah. and all this stuff. So there's there's like advice podcasts. It's and, so different from like and I mean, podcasts are such an like the modern day podcast is like such a modern like just like thing exploding on the internet right i now. still think it's funny they're called podcasts just yeah. from like the ipod yeah like, people used to listen to yeah, them on the ipod crazy. and they're like you can have these podcasts and right. i don't really think about it now but like that's not what they are anymore right right um but um, yeah that, that but was yeah, always a you can one. like it's really cool seeing like celebrities do them um because you like actually get to know them you know they're spending yeah. two hours you know every once a week yeah it, it feels genuine and not, yeah not yeah scripted. you like actually get yeah. to know them and it's cool you build like these like underground communities like 
I, I always, I so always think it's a little bit strange because you learn so much about people. And oh, just yeah. Their manneris- not, not just their mannerisms, but their life and their stories right. and how they, right. they talk. They're very and personal. If they're having, you know, had a bad week this one week and, yeah. you know, all that stuff shows. And then um, they don't know anything about you. And I always think of it this weird, like, one-sided conversation yeah. where you're like, hey, guys. Hey, and they're just like ignoring you yeah. on the side. Um, but <laughs> it's so it's yeah, it's about. super cool when you guys leave comments and we get to read them. Yeah, and yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, it definitely uh, you know makes us keep wanting to do this. So, so thank you guys too uh, that listen because uh, it keeps us going, keeps us going. Uh, is there any other bucket list things that you would like to talk about? I, I brought ran so. mine dry. Um, I think I'm good. Yeah. I have like a bunch of smaller ones, but they're all just like games I want to beat and I don't want to go over yeah, all those. Yeah. They're like things I'm going to do soon. This, so. this, yeah. Um, that was a good list. I like that. That Final Fantasy one took me by surprise because that was one that I didn't have like written down. Yeah. But that's true. I it, have been one of It's to a do game that. series that I've always appreciated, but never like taken the time to play. Yeah. I also had some like smaller ones that I did recently, like play the original Clock Tower. Yeah. was one that I've always wanted to do. Um, and with the power of the, the, the Super Nintendo Classic and being able to get a PS4 Famicom was one of mine. On there. Um, that was nice. What was that? Get a PS4. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You're, you're going to have that in, Checked off. in an hour possibly. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move into the releases. So the releases this week are actually pretty good. If you ask are me, they? I, I think so. Let's um, hear them. There is at least five games I would play Sick. on this list. So here we go. Starting off, July 10th, 20XX for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. This is the Mega Man X copycat style game. They basically okay. wanted to make a Mega Man game, right. and they took the formula and did it. It's a little bit more cartoony. It's a little bit more si- silly. It seems a little bit more floaty. I don't know. Are you excited about it? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to get it gotcha. so no gotcha uh but that's also because i'm going to have detroit to play right i have the persona dancing games which i'm super excited to right. play and uh, another game on this list comes out that i'm gonna play so gotcha uh no but maybe if it gets really good reviews on those systems in particular and um maybe if they do a physical edition or something what's it coming out on july 10th okay no, no no what's it coming out on uh ps4 switch gotcha so then the next day, July 11th, 20XX comes out on the Xbox One. Cool. I don't know why. It's a different day, but that's that's what it says. Uh, next up, July 10th, MXGP Pro is coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. A lot of Xs coming out. Yes. <laughs> yes, there are. Um, I don't know anything about this. This is not. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this is not one of those games on that list. Uh, next up, Shining Resonance Refrain is coming out for PC, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, July 10th. This is a game that I keep seeing ads for. Yeah, same. And the art looks so appealing to me. It lo- it's like that, it's an anime style, and it's like right down my alley with character design. Right. And I've been, there's a demo apparently out on PlayStation and Switch and such. And I've been wanting to download it, and I just haven't done it yet. Um, Because I'm very curious about this game because I think I might like it. I think it's just like a visual novel RPG. Let's go download it. Sure. I think it's like a visual novel slash RPG style thing. Sweet. Um, But yeah, I keep seeing it advertised to me. I don't know if it's because I keep clicking on stuff related to it and then like I'm getting these ads for it or whatever. Yeah. But I I heard that there's a demo and I I need to go play it. Sweet. Next up, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker coming July 13th to the Switch and the 3DS. Um, this is one of the Wii U ports coming over to the Switch. Right. I actually really want this one. This is probably the one I want the second most, uh, after Hyrule Warriors, which I still haven't picked up because I don't want to buy them at full price. I don't, right. especially like Hyrule Warriors I already own on the Wii U. So that makes right. no sense. This one is one I didn't buy on the Wii U because I was like, I didn't really like the treasure tracker levels in 3D World. Okay. Uh, Cause you play it like kind of like a demo to it almost right. in that. But then I was playing Bomberman 64 a couple weeks ago, and I, w- I was uh, talking to my girlfriend Wendy about it, and she yeah. was like, and I, or I was explaining to her, and I was like, so in this game, you can't jump. It's a platformy like puzzle game where getting up to a high platform is the puzzle. 
Like, that's right. what you... I'm like, it's kind of like Mario 64 if you couldn't jump, but it was more puzzly. Yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. And we played it for a little while. And then halfway through playing the game, I'm like, oh my God, it's Treasure Toad. It's the Toad Treasure Tracker that's game. Hilarious. That's all that game is. He can't jump and he's just trying to collect the stars. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I should probably play that game. That's hilarious. So I'm, I will most likely by the end of the year have played this game but i one is competing with another switch game which is a problem and two um i don't i don't want to buy those ports the day that they come out i don't think fair enough um next up earthfall is coming july 13th for the ps4 xbox one and pc don't know what that is <laughs> never heard of it uh next up uh, <laughs> hotel transylvania 3 monsters overboard PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC coming July 13th. Don't tell Lindsay about this game. Why are they doing... Remember the time on PlayStation 3 where they stopped doing licensed tie-in games to movies? Yeah. Let's go back to that. I feel like this was like giant on the Xbox. So many movie tie-ins. I just don't understand... Well, like the original Xbox? Yeah. Yes. Well, that whole generation was really bad with it. And like they would legitimately come out with like 30 of them and one would be okay. Yeah. Like, I remember playing Constantine. On I think the, it's a sweet one. I played Ratchet Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> I played Constantine on the Xbox. I played the Star yeah. Wars. Uh, I played so many of them. I man. played the Star Wars Episode 3 yeah. on the Xbox, and I think it came out before the movie, or I at least played it before I saw the movie. I was yeah. like, this is spoiling the movie for me. Um, yeah, there's like dozens of them on that system. And then Spider-Man another thing 2. was like the cartoon like video game tie-ins. Sure. Yeah, right. they were just like weird spinoffs. Yeah, they're, they're like what? But anyway, they that kind of died yeah, on the PlayStation Three. There, there wasn't a lot of them, and there wasn't a lot on early PS Four. And now they're right. starting to come back, and I'm not a big fan. I of don't that. like it because um, it reminds they're not me. Good. Yeah, it reminds me of like the shovelware on the Wii. Like the Wii got a whole bunch of that that garbage. Yeah, they're trash. Um, that being said, maybe this is the best game of all time. I don't know. Maybe it's giving the who knows. And then finally, uh, July thirteenth for the Switch, the big one. Octopath Traveler. Man, people um, are so excited about dude, this game. It looks so good. I, I mean, I say it game. looks so good. I've played it for three hours. It's really good. Um, Nick's played it for 20-something hours already, and it hasn't even come out. That's uh, crazy. He's just restarted the demo. Like The demo is a three-hour unlocked version of the game, basically. I don't even know what it looks like. Really? Yeah. It is a 16-bit, like, old Final Fantasy-looking game. Okay. Um, but it's in 3D, so you can still walk back. It's got, oh, like, nice. a 3D plane to the 16-bit. Cool. Yeah. And it is just a classic turn It's very much like old Final Fantasy. Nice. Classic turn-based um, combat I like RPG. I like that combat a lot. And then the gimmick to the game is the Octopath, which is there's eight characters that all have their own story and you pick one of them and you play as them and you can go find the other ones in your story that's and cool. continue that's their how, uh, story Final Fantasy five is. as a party or you can not and just oh, do the cool. story kind of on your do your story like i'm playing as primrose who is a dancer and her father was murdered i believe is her story and she's looking for the kind of gang or cult that killed her father and I'm planning on not picking up any other characters. Oh, wow. Um, we'll see how that goes. I don't know if you're going to completely be like, we'll see. I'm sure I can't get like the true ending to the game or anything like that. Um, but I know Nick played the demo and already got a full party of characters in the demo because he played it so much that he just went through all the text. Yeah, that's and awesome. And he went through and got it. It's voice acted, which is really cool for a 16-bit game to that hear really sweet. good voice acting. Um, and it is the perfect portable game for the Switch and a Switch exclusive. This is by far the biggest... Switch game to our group, like me, Kellen. Nick, yeah, that's really cool. Um, since the game sounds awesome, I don't know because we didn't all buy Mario and we didn't all buy right. Zelda. So right. this is this is the first Switch game I nice. think. Uh, will you, Splatoon two? I guess was. The will last you one. guys ever convince me to get a Switch? Yeah, I think the, it'll. The world I, may never know. I think it'll be pretty easy, actually. I don't think so. Uh, you want to go play Octopath? <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> um, and that is it for the releases, and that is also it for this episode of the press x podcast i hope that the uh, audio only wasn't that wasn't that jarring wasn't that big of a deal yeah. something that we're trying out maybe we'll try it again next week let maybe. us know in the comments if you liked it yeah um i mean we're technically just taking something away so i feel like there's nothing to like about that but we're taking it away to have the ability to possibly make better content and right I, I would like to try it just for like one more week I kind of want to move the setup around, like you said, make it so that we face each yeah. other more like a well, table and with should the, be with, set up. With something like this, it you know kind of 
makes it where we can put it on other platforms if we wanted to. Yeah, way easier, like, at least, yeah. yeah. Like, um, that's whether it be SoundCloud been, or something like I've that. I've been thinking about, too, is yeah. kind of how to do that and go go through the process yeah. of that. Um, so let us know if that would interest you as well, get, yeah, getting it sure. on, other, on other platforms. But thank you for being here, Todd. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys so much for watching, or listening in this case, and we will speak with you next time.